Hello again and welcome to Bench Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthway. Hey guys, I'm Carla Garrick. Oh, um, so here we are in the middle of the last week of the filing period. Yes, and that's for local elections here that's in New like, Hampshire. That's all your state and county offices and federal. So CD1, CD2, there are no federal Senate races in New Hampshire this year. Um, but that's all your executive counselor, your governor candidates, your state senators, your state reps, your county commissioners, you know, all the county treasurer, county sheriff, all that stuff. Um, we were just talking before we came on the air that, so the Secretary of State has an online report that shows who's signed up. But you never really know, like, as of when? It has a date on it. <laughs> but I know it also says somewhere on their website that uh, reports that come in from the cities or towns. So unless you're running for um, a statewide office or state senate or something like that or county office, you're filing in your local town. So, you know, if you, if I were running for state rep, which I'm not, um, I would go down to City Hall and file. Except Don't, on the last day, then everyone has to go to, to no, Concord, right? No, only if you're a declaration of intent on the last day, which is for third-party races. Oh, is that yeah, how that works? You can file right no. up until 5 o'clock on... Well, uh, definitely for Senate, you have no, to file Senate, in No, for Senate, you have to go to Concord. Concord. So it's all but weird. It's weird because, of course, you can't just have one simple well, rule so, and be like, hey, why don't we do this? So the report comes out, right? <laughs> and it'll say as of, like, today's the 12th. So it says as of June 11th. But it also says that any reports that came in from the town and the cities after noon on any day won't show up on that night's report. It'll show up on the next night's report. So <laughs> when it says as of June 11th, I'm like, does that mean if somebody filed in Concord in the afternoon? So who knows? So as of um, some point, either on the 10th or the 11th, um, there were some Republicans that were starting to show up on the... Um, the Manchester state rep races. I know that uh, Mark McLean and Mark Pru are both running for re-election nice. in Ward 8. Good. Mark Warden and John Morton have signed up for, um, I think it's 8-9, don't quote me on that, 689 Floterial maybe, maybe it's 689, there's a Floterial. They've both signed up for that. Um, I saw that Larry Gagne and Will Infantine signed up. Um, this, there's a guy who's run before, I think his name's Ben Prescott. He signed up. Uh, Kathy Paquette, who's in Ward 5, she signed up. There's, you know, a lot of the same, a lot of people. Andre Rosa's running in the Floterial. The Floterial, which is West Side in Ward 1. That'll be interesting because Andre originally lived in Ward. He lived in Ward One, so and he only lost his race in Ward One by thirteen votes, if I remember well, and, correctly. Right. He, so, so he's was, got some name recognition there, yep. and he's got name recognition. He's very involved. And in he's the run in Ward Eleven before, right. you know. Um, so, so that's interesting. Um, there was a uh, I can't think of his I name. I saw a tweet yesterday, actually by uh, Ray Ray, who said <laughs> uh, that he was struggling to. They're struggling to fill the Democratic slate, which is which, weird, right? Well, I mean, it is and it isn't. I don't know. Sometimes if there's like there's just been so many incumbents, maybe. Yeah, well, that does. And happen. they're old and and older. Sorry, right. not to be well, ages. No, or you know, generously as boomers making room for the silent generation, which would be not the boomers, but us, the Gen well, Xers, I, who are desperately waiting for our turn to. I I wonder, like, <laughs> are they run? You know, like, so Dan and I have been running for a while in War Ten, and we have made it clear. Who's I didn't running even, there? I have no idea. Oh wow! Right, so I'm like this. Here's me, man. I don't know. You know teamwork looking well, that, a little well, difficult mean, oh I just so like I don't know and I you know it's not my job to know that to I'm not in charge of these things anymore and I like that I'm not in charge of these things anymore. so you're just really gonna focus on Victoria I am race. focusing 100 uh, Brittany and I both decided um, Brittany who by default became the ward clerk in Ward 11 she was a selectman she got bumped up to ward clerk oh wow um, that happened last week when we were down at City Hall for something else is, is that some unsung hero um, position what does no, that mean some, but oh it's the second in line so you have the ward moderator Later. who runs things and then yeah. you have the ward clerk and I don't really know exactly and okay. then you have the selectman under them and you know honestly like that would be a good role for me or for Louie or for someone like those are good roles for uh, people the, who the are civic interested. minded yes. leaders within communities yes. like we we own our house there. We're probably yeah. going to be there for a long time. You know, right. that kind of thing. It's just to start to work your way up because 
one of the things we've learned over the years is because if you know the system, and this is sort of my plea for, you know, everyone, we had, I had posted something about the Piscataway River cleanup. I yeah. think it was a little video on Twitter of Louis like dragging yeah. some tires behind him. He looked very manly. It was very cute. And it's quite popular. It's getting like weird yep. amount of traction. And um, of course, you know, the top two naysayers have to come in and they have to be like, yes, they tax you, but they never fix anything or something. And but I you responded gotta get out and, and said, actually, the parks department's been pretty yeah, useful. Yeah. Like we're making the tire pile so that they can bring in the yeah. truck. They brought us a, a trash can yeah. so that we can do it. So I think this like note of everyone who is in government is Must just, be doing, as it's just pure you. Well, evil. I mean, you it's can, wrong. You can, you can keep that attitude, but it's not really productive and it's not healthy because everything is not bad. It's just well, like well, everything. Just exactly Everybody's that. not out to get you. And as much as you know, we, you and I probably have, can find fault in mo many things that the government does. You know, that doesn't mean every city employee is bad. Kate Waldo that we deal with at the Parks Department for the Friends of Piscataqua River Park, and she deals with We Heart West. You know, right. She deals with all the coordinating <laughs> things. She is so helpful. She, she's like a character on Parks and Rec or yep. something. She's she kind loves of like her, she loves her along job. with the... She tries to get us whatever we need. You know, like we have access to a storage shed over there to keep our equipment. Now, we buy our some equipment. Right. But, but at least they, we have a place where we can store it safely. Well, my point is just, and I think it's to your point as well, is like you, there's just this like negative prevalence on some of these things where it's like this is not serving you like it's not serving you as a human to yep. be this like mad about everything yep. you know like it's like or blaming there's like a blame thing to do like this is a terrible story there was a in my neighborhood not far from where i live um a little child i don't remember if it was boy or girl fell out of like a third story window over on blaine street okay and the right away, the people with we need to crack down on landlords and we need more regulation. And I'm thinking, we need more regulation? I mean, it's I, already illegal for children to fall out of well, windows. Well, there's folks. already, like, landlords already have to put screens up. At, and, and the mother of. At some, right, but I'm like, some accidents just no, happen. That's we the, can't legislate. That's what the mother said. She goes, I went to help my, uh, my four year old and it was just a terrible accident. I couldn't, you know. So it, but I mean, there was posts by people who were just like, I think we need to re, maybe we need to relook at the occupancy permit or whatever. And I thought, you, you on one hand, these are the same people complaining that or, rents are going up and it's getting, and then, <laughs> then you want Every more. time you guys complain about something, the rent goes the rent up. The rent goes up. Every Is time it? you're like, someone needs to do something yeah. about it. It makes it more expensive. Um, Mind your own business. So on the parks thing before, I, I just wanted to say this because I saw it. And I, it's, again, this is something that, you know, do I think it could be done better? Yes. Is it better than nothing? Yes. Um, the parks department put out the aquatic facility dates for the <gasps> summer. You know what I saw today, Tammy? A muskrat. Really? Yes. I was like, I, I. How big? So first Where? of all, okay. So it was Are you on sure the. It was a muskrat and not just a rat. Uh, well, it was know. swimming quite deep underwater for a really long time. So what happened was, it was me and Obi, and I was out on the trail, and um, and we were coming back to the car, and there's this one pond, and I always look yeah. because sometimes there are turtles, yeah, yeah. there's loons, there's ducks, the cardinals. I mean, it's like a scene out of yeah. Disney. I love going there. And uh, the water was pretty clear because sometimes it yeah. could be a little like uh, algae, yeah. you know, like swampy. Yeah. And um, and I was like, oh, what's that? And at first I was like, oh, my God, is that a wild koi? Because it looked like patterned. Uh -huh. And then I was like, no, no, what is that? And then I looked and I was like, is it a beaver? And I was like, no, because it had this long skinny, skinny tail. tail. Like Interesting. A, and so I got home and I was like, I don't know what I saw. I think it was a cross between a, uh, uh, I was like, it was like a cross between a beaver and a rat. And Louis's like, I think that's a thing in New Hampshire. Let's look, up, <laughs> let's look is up that rodents. Is that is? So, yeah, so the tail of the pictures we looked up, Still looked shorter than whatever this was, but let's just say this was. So it was about with its muskrat. body was about this yeah. big. Its tail was almost like two. Definitely the tail was longer than the body, and then it was like beaver, sort of yeah. rat shaped. 
and and robust and swimming like deep well, so underwater was If I was back in New York, because cool. I grew up on the Mohawk <laughs> River, right? If I was back in New York and I was a kid, I'm not saying it's always this way now, I'd call that a river rat. But <laughs> but I don't know if we have. Like, I don't know that there I, would be so, river rats in the Piscataqua River. So so I looked up um, the, the 12 rodents of New Hampshire when we mm. were trying to identify it, and river rat was not <laughs> on the list, okay. but muskrat was. Interesting. So, but I, I too might describe it as a river rat, but muskrat sounds... Yeah, it sounds a little less... You know, so more, anyways, more. Um, the parks, the not rivery parks, um, <laughs> swimming places are opening... Um, this is what is going to be available. Um, I never noticed this before, and it's a bit much. Uh, Livingston Pool, which is the one up in the north end, of course opens first because, you know, <laughs> north end. Because it's the north end. So that end. opens next Monday on the 17th. Um, lap swimming is from noon to 1, and then it's open for the public's regular swimming 2 to 7. Uh, the Rayco Theater Pool, which is right on Head Street, Near Where's my that? house. Oh, it's the one it down there. It is an okay. absolutely beautiful pool. I'm giving away a, a secret. Um, it opens the <laughs> following week on the 24th. Uh, public swim, same thing, 2 to 7. It is closed three weekends out of the year, which really stinks, which is the weekend of June 28th, <laughs> July 12th, and July 26th because they hold swim meets there. Okay. Um, yeah, it is kind of like an Olympic-sized like, pool. It is. is it, what used, I would it was call like it. ten inches short of Olympic size was or something it? like that. And a man, <laughs> and I don't remember his name, but he was um, involved with the swim program, and he paid himself to have the pool extended about within the last decade. So I'd that say. we can call it an Olympic-sized exactly. um, swimming Crystal pool. Crystal <laughs> Lake, I believe, is open now. It is open um, eight to eight to eight. Uh, the Dupont Splash Pad and the. Sh Shaheen Basquill Splash Pad are both open seven days a week, 11 in the morning till 7 at night. Um, facilities subject to closure or hour changes due to weather or low staffing, which does happen. Um, this is where it's just a bit nuts for me. Pool facilities operate at a 25 to 1 bather to lifeguard ratio. Personally, if it's all adults... I that mean, everyone's count. pretty much a lifeguard then, right? Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, well, they're saying... Also, they're... don't swim after you've eaten, which yeah, for Americans apparently... must be really hard because <laughs> we eat all the time. Well, and that's such a, I don't know where that ever came from, but we lived by it as yes. a child. I think it was just a ploy by... My, our parents to and keep us quiet for a half an hour. Yes, and so that they could take a post uh, po post lunch nap. Yes, <laughs> or a cocktail. Yes. Um, <laughs> so the, at least that stuff's open. I mean, and they, uh, I've never been to Livingston actually to the pool. I've been to the Rako Theater pool. It is really really nice. Uh, it's not like we stay there very long. Could they do it better? Yes, because there's like nowhere to sit inside the fence, which I find bizarre. Um, like yeah. really bizarre like would it kill us you know there's bleachers but they're on the outside of the fence it's so maybe just we strange can, maybe we can try something so what if we tried more public private things right and so here's an example so I think part of the tension is let's say with the pool or or trying to build a nice building yeah, or whatever I mean, everyone's like half the people sometimes us are like you're wasting money yeah. And half the people are like, we really need this. So in the end, those things meet, and then yep. we get like almost the worst of both worlds. We get the ugly building that's yes. probably going to make us sick, sick in like 10 years uh, to be cost effective, right? And I'm like, so that doesn't really serve anyone because now we're just getting almost the worst of yeah, both, yeah. right? So now let's say we have the pools here. Mm -hmm. Why can't we actually, I don't know, legalize food trucks? Oh, Imagine no. that, right? I thought the same and, thing. Even and the hot and dog you could cart. have like food trucks, hot dog carts. We could, I don't know, be like crazy and actually give permits for like a, a little tequila van, right? Or a guy selling red stripes, you know? Right. And and just let the market well, provide the things the state won't provide so well, that things aren't I, just sucky. That's what I kind of thought. Like, so you've got these pools, and I, I as much as I've been advocating and for dog years. parks would right? be perfect. Um, I've advocated that we charge for the pools. Well, apparently we can't because we've taken federal grants, and because of the federal grants, <laughs> you, can't, you can't say anybody can't swim or something like that. So, okay, <laughs> whatever. I still think we should charge for the pools. I understand that we can't. But then, like, when we went, I was like, you can't bring in beverages. Which, okay, 
but there's nowhere to get a beverage. There's a soda machine inside the office <laughs> that the staff can get to. But I'm like, so what if I want a water? Like, no water for you no, because or, they confiscated my water going to Dallas or, and they confiscated my water coming back from Dallas like, and my shaving cream. I understand cream. like you don't want to have to set up a snack bar because who the heck's going to work? They can barely get kids to work their thing. But it's like, but you could sell, you could sell chips. Or Maybe I'm going to fulfill my lifelong dream of, of being an American lifeguard. And so I'm it's, it's weird to me. And then, and then, then like, like, you're like, okay, summer. and if it isn't at the pool, could it just be outside like you said? <laughs> Uh, anyway. I mean, it's just, uh, I just, things. you know, guys, we could just do better if everyone just, uh, like, stop trying to control everyone so, else. So, this is an odd situation that I heard about. First, I saw it on Neighbor Works, Neighbor, whatever that awful platform that I'm on. <laughs> neighbor something. It's awful. Stabby All in neighbor. it. You can't say anything <laughs> about anything or somebody complains. Whatever. Sensitive neighbor. It's super sensitive. <laughs> um, and I'm a moderator, and I get to vote on things. And I'm like, seriously, do you really find that offensive? Just because we don't agree doesn't mean it's offensive. So I saw a post there from somebody about somebody wandering into people's houses or whatever. And then when I was at City Hall last week, there was a man who spoke in the public comment, and he was talking about somebody wandering into houses and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, and he mentioned Trolley Street, and Victoria said, where is this happening? And I said, well, Trolley Street, which is over off of, you know, over in Victoria's world. And um, so then I saw an article, I think this is uh, Inklink. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, I think this is Inklink. So the street is Vandora Drive, which is down, I believe, in either eight, Ward 8 or 9, so it's in the south end. Uh, single family neighborhood, whatever. And a while back, um, a while back, some entity, Community Options Inc., which is, has an office in Nashua, but it's run by a company in New Jersey, has bought two different homes. They bought a four bedroom, one and a half bath at 54 Vandora Drive and um, another single family home at 7 Rosewood Lane. And they're using them as, um, oh, what's, I want to use the right word. Halfway home? No, no, no. This is for people with, like developmentally disabled, da, 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 da. Um, it's a group home for developmentally challenged individuals being a staff. So that sounds fine, except for one of the t residents literally is walking into people's homes yeah. at random times and then fighting to leave. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. And like the, the you know, and he's kind of like, pe the reporter or somebody said they were there talking to a neighbor and a car pulls up and the guy's in the back seat. And they, like she said, like blood curdling, screaming because he does not want to go in the house, into his home. And I'm thinking, okay, so see, this is where there's got to be some happy medium. You don't want to say, no, we don't want any developmentally challenged people living in our neighborhood because that's not really what those neighbors are concerned about. The neighbors are concerned that they weren't notified ahead of time, that there are children in the neighborhood, that people, like... Well, and that their property rights right. are being violated. I mean, so, like, I mean, if the guy was buck things... naked one day, like, stripped down buck... And I'm thinking, yeah, I don't want to have to deal with... Like, you're sitting in the privacy of your own home. You don't want to be like, oh, Pete's in the backyard naked again. You know, right. Like, why would you have to deal with that? <laughs> Even if he's not physically harming you, I, why would you want to deal with that? So this is one of those situations where you're like, you don't want the worst of everything. You, you know, you want some people who can live in a community, like can live out in, the, in a neighborhood that just have some quirks or whatever, and they just need some help with life, you know, first, but then like you look at this individual and it's not that, and now to get him out of there is apparently going to take forever. And I'm thinking, I feel for these neighbors. I mean, the guy came to the alderman because he, he doesn't know what else to do. Like, the guy's right. walking in his house. Um, so that's that. Um, I did want to mention, this is completely jumping around, but I did want to mention because I will bet a beer. So there was a bill um, to say that you had to pr prove citizenship in order to register to vote, which I think is a reason. Well, I mean, that seems reasonable, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, I remember when I read it, it was either California or New York State was going to 
uh, start to let non-citizens vote in certain elections. Well, it was for, like, like for it was for like city elections or like library trustee. Yeah. I, it was like some hey, we're just going to eke in here, yeah. and then when no one's watching, we're just going to let yep. anyone vote. I'm like, look, man. It's not like, that hard to prove if you're a citizen, no. if you're here legally. So, of course, the left is like, oh, you're going to disenfranchise be be because, thousands of voters. Well, no, no, but the thing is, disenfranchise, like, th th they're actually making two counter arguments. You can't both say um, voting is so important, so important that if you make someone jump through some hoops, that's disenfranchising them. But, it's but then also being like, making people jump through hoops is so unfair, how dare you? Yeah. It's like, well, it can't both be the most serious thing, therefore we must protect the process, or not be it. it just, so, uh, this came out, you know, I think it was a Senate bill, it was a House bill, and then it went over to the Senate, and now it's went to a committee of conference, and they, they meet, the House meets tomorrow, the Senate meets tomorrow, I believe, too. The House, there's no way they're passing this. Um, Senator, but the way the, the Democrats have been framing this Well, not even Twitter, that. I just, like, you know, it's like... It's actually malinformation. It, it got to a point where it came out of the House, and basically it said, if you can't provide this proof, you don't get to vote. And I'm like, how about, I think the people just want to know who's with them and who's against them on that. Right? You either you either think you have to prove who you are and that you should vote, or you don't. It's not really, there's not a lot of gray in the middle, right? So, so right. do you think... The way they've changed it. But do you think that there are scores of people... Who can't who, prove? Who, who can't, who are currently voting. Like, who, why are the Democrats making such a big deal out of these things? Because we brought like, millions of people over illegally into our country? Sure, I, I understand all I'm of that. Saying. But do you, Tammy, think there are, like, scores of immigrants illegally voting in New Hampshire? Um, not, no, not necessarily. However, I do believe there are a lot of people who believe there could be, and those people... Right, but no, I mean, no, no, I believe saying, pigs can fly. And, no, I'm just <laughs> saying, those people, it, I think making people believe that the election process is fair and not above board is, is important. <laughs> well, it, well, I think we kind of hashed that in 2020, right. you know, where magically, I don't know, 200,000 well, votes... So the, what appeared so, instead of just agreeing with the house position they, they mucked it all up and I'll, this is gonna fail no. so <laughs> senator gray he's a charmer um he has a, something in place where so if you can't if you don't have the documentation then it's going to be up to the poll workers to try to substantiate what you've got so they're going to be able to access Oh, uh, well, I don't know. There's like three databases. So, so now stuff. we have and wait, da it's even weirder. databases instead of just doing the affidavit. Which... And, and what's even weirder, if they can't do it in 20 minutes, then the person can get a ballot. But then that person, by, with, by the Wednesday or Friday of that week, has to go to a superior court judge and convince that. I'm like, okay, you just lost 100 votes in the House because they're like, I'm sorry, that's stupid. But all of this is just kind of stupid. It's just stupid. stupid. Like sometimes like it's like it's not that hard. You have to show a driver's license, a state issued ID, or a passport to vote in America. Well, Why is, is that so hard? Okay, this isn't even just. This isn't even about showing a voter ID. This is literally for people wanting to register to vote. So you've never voted before, and you'd like to register to vote, and we'd like you to prove that you're a citizen. I mean, it doesn't okay. seem like so it now, this should be so complicated. Right. But I mean, there's a, I know there's another bill. I don't know what the status is that they're talking about. Whether when a lease ends, does that mean the lease ends on property? And they, they go round and round and round and round. And uh, the, the rep that, um, I can never think of his name, the rep that was the New Hampshire Supreme Court Justice. Lynn. Lynn. So he says, so here's how it works. The lease ends. You have a 12-month lease in an apartment. He goes, when the lease ends... It ends for the tenant, and they can go do what they want. He goes, for the landlord, it, it never ends. ends. End. Yeah. So, and it's like, how insane is it that, that we keep trying to come up with words, and I'm like this, how about this? You are a tenant in one of these two situations only. You can show a, a lease covering a period of time, or you can show a re payment of a, a, I mean, a record of payment. If you can't show me those two things, I don't care what your story is, I don't care what you claim, you are not a tenant, get out. So I think we are this close to having to revert back to common law, 
which is basically common sense. We have written all the words that can be written about things. Nothing in the world makes sense anymore. Someone asked today, when on Twitter, they asked, when did you know, um, <laughs> like what was your red flag for identifying something was suspicious under COVID mania? And I answered, I said, well, uh -oh. for me, it was when they started changing the definitions of words online in real time, including the words pandemic to take out that it has to cause worldwide high death rates because right, that never right. materialized. Uh, the definition of natural immunity, the definition of general immunity, the definition of inoculations, <laughs> the definition of anti-vaxxer to include anyone who is against the mandates and the definition of vaccines yeah. to make it to include <laughs> gene therapies that have nothing to do with actually inoculating yourself. So when they change the plain meaning of words, in real time, we can no longer have rule of law. Right. You cannot have rule of law if we cannot agree on the common terms. You cannot have well, an intelligent and cogent conversation if we're not even well, talking like about the same a thing. Another word, I mean, you hear it all the time from black candidates who say, I'm running as a Republican and I get called a racist all the time and you're like, do you guys understand what racist means? Like, how can you call the black man racist? I mean, a black man can be racist, but that's not what you're inferring. You're inferring that that black man thinks that black people are inferior, and you're like, do you really think that's what so, that black man thinks? So, so it's and, and it's not even that. That, to some extent, is just insane name-calling. I think most people are over that, too. The words alt-right, turns out, saw something today um, the Democratic Party and Democratic voters have moved by magnitudes more left over from, I think it was 2017, uh -huh. than the right has, has moved, moved to the more right. right. And right. I'm like, so that means when, when anyone on the left calls the right alt-right or extremists, you are now spreading misinformation because it is not true. And I would like to see you censored as well. <laughs> oh, I think we're out of time. <laughs> I keep getting the warning on the screen. Um, so wow. actually, I have a couple of announcements. Yeah. So this weekend, there is a Anarchapulco nonconformist series that is taking place. The tickets are $79. It's on Saturday and Sunday afternoon. It's all live streamed. So people can buy tickets. If you go to my uh, Twitter feed, to my X feed, Carla Garrick, it's the pinned post up there. $79. Everyone's talking about decentralized solutions. Mm -hmm. Next Monday, Pork Fest starts. Dung, dung, yeah, dung. I'm going so camping. it'll be a week long of festivities up there. I believe there are still some tickets available. Naomi Wolf will be there on Saturday. I was talking to some of the RFK team yesterday. I might see if we can work some, some magic without metal detectors, making no promises. Who knows? Maybe. But there's an exciting couple of uh, events coming up. You can find more information on. Uh, uh, my website, CarlaGarrick.com. Uh, that's all we got for this week. We will not be here next week. Um, I am going camping and you're going to Pork Fest. Um, and we'll be back the following week and then we'll be able to tell you more about who's running for what and what, what the matchups against Republicans versus Democrats will be in November. It'll be an interesting one. Enjoy this wonderful <laughs> weather. We're having a great summer so far. Knock on wood. Bye, guys. Bye.